Hello, and welcome to the program. Ukraine has been receiving a lot of attention from both NGOs and intergovernmental organizations who are here to aid in the reform process. Joining us in the studio today is Martin Enberg, the head of the Council of Europe office in Ukraine, who is here to talk about the work of the Council of Europe. So welcome. Thank you so much. Can you start out by telling us uh, what are the main activities of the Council of Europe in Ukraine? Sure. Um, um, first of all, thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure. Great. Um, of course. We, we work here in several, several areas. We work in accordance to uh, an action plan that is between the Council of Europe and the government of Ukraine. And uh, it specifies different areas uh, such as you know, electoral reform, work on decentralization, media reform. Uh, we also work on judicial reform. We work a little bit in the sphere of education, anti-corruption, these type of areas. And this is the current action plan that will end by the end of this year. So we're also in the process of now, together with our Ukrainian partners, elaborate a new action plan. Okay, thank you. Mm. You mentioned uh, media mm. reform. What makes this a priority and how is the Council of Europe going about it? Well, media reform is a priority for a number of reasons, but number one is, of course, that uh, I mean, a free and independent media is one of the fundaments of a democratic society. Mm -hmm. And this is, of course, what we deal with. Council of Europe, we deal with work in three main pillars that we usually talk about, and it's democracy, democracy, rule of law and human rights. So free media is part of these pillars, of course. They're in accordance with our standards, as we like to talk about. And uh, second of all, it's also part of the action plan, which means it's also a direct request from the government of Ukraine. They have asked us to support the reform of the media sphere in Ukraine. Okay, so uh, the Council of Europe is helping to establish the national public broadcaster, is that correct? That's correct, amongst other things. Mm -hmm. um, so what about the current media landscape makes this a necessity? Well, for us, uh, having a, establishing a public service broadcaster in Ukraine has been part of Council of Europe's, of Ukraine's obligations uh, f uh, in front of Council of Europe. Mm -hmm. um, we see as anywhere in the world that the need for an independent, unbiased media outlet is critical these days. I mean, we all know the situation about talking about uh, post-factual reality or fake news and all of these things. Yeah. So to have a source of independent, objective media is part of um, what uh, we feel is uh, required from you for Ukraine right now. And it's part also part of what Ukraine has asked us to support them with. So it's a mutual, shall we say, a mutual request in this sense. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned uh, justice reform. Mm -hmm. um, it's been pointed out by many analysts and observers as one of the more difficult reform aspects um, of the Ukrainian government. <clears throat> what kind of progress are you guys making or what do you see in the future? Um, well, it is indeed a difficult undertaking. It's a huge undertaking. Uh, the, the judiciary in Ukraine has unfortunately had had a tendency to to enjoy very low trust in the public and this is why the reform is now going on to make sure that there is indeed an independent judiciary that the public can trust that the, uh, also that investors can trust from our side we see great progress at the moment um, last year there was amended adopted to the Ukrainian constitutions which basically uh, in a nutshell overhauled the whole Ukrainian judiciary system okay. uh, we were part of that we provided expertise uh, expert opinions and uh, from our point of view the amendments uh, uh, to the constitution were were in line with the council of europe standards so we see that as a great progress now there are other reforms ongoing it's about setting up the the so-called uh, self-governing bodies they are already there this is fine mm -hmm. um, now one of the more debated reforms is of course the appointment of judges to the uh, to the supreme court uh, we have been part of that. We have looked at, we have supported setting up the standards for this appointment. And uh, from the Council of Europe point of view, uh, this is, uh, this is, I mean, the reform and the appointment procedure is, is in line with our standards. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you also, I think, are doing something with electoral reform as well. Uh, this is a different story. We are working with that mm -hmm. uh, concerning electoral reform. We have, uh, we have. Uh, uh, fairly, I would say, fairly unique situation with Ukraine where one of the Council of Europe bodies that's called the Venice Commission mm. that provides opinions to, uh, to their member states. Ukraine is a member state of the Council of Europe. 
um, on constitutional amendments, on electoral reforms. And the Venice Commission, in this case, have stated in their recommendation that Ukraine should go from what they have now, which is a mixed electoral system. 50% of the members of parliament are elected in single mandate districts. The other ones are elected on proportional national lists. And the Venice Commission have re recommended Ukraine to go to a proportional uh, a system of proportional lists uh, with and so-called open lists. So this is what we're working on now and we are debating and we are engaging with our Ukrainian counterparts to, to look at the possibilities of, of assisting in this process as well. Okay, so have you had any projects that would strengthen local government, for example? Mm -hmm. We do that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, part, part of the reform process in Ukraine, as, as we are all aware now, is the decentralization. Mm -hmm. um, the so-called amalgamation of local communities into larger administrative units. This uh, is so far a very, very good reform. Um, a lot of uh, this amalgamation has been done. We are currently at the stage of approximately 30% of all of the, of the target. So 30% so of the target has been reached so far. And in the newly amalgamated communities, you see a lot of progress. Uh, it's actually fascinating. You know, they get more mandate, they get more budgetary means, and you see schools are being renovated, roads are being paved, uh, parks are being fixed, etc., etc. So it's actually a very good reform at this stage. Um, so, and we have helped that. We have supported the legislative part of this. We are also supporting local communities with uh, expert assistance on how to deal with their new mandates and setting up standards for this, which we try to do. Mm -hmm. And there's another part of it, which is also that the Council of Europe, we have a body called the Congress for Local and Regional Self-Authorities. Mm -hmm. And um, it consists of uh, delegations from all of our member states um, and uh, Ukraine of course has a delegation there and through that Congress we support with projects on local democracy uh, 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 more or less all over Ukraine. Well that's really interesting mm. and great to hear actually. Um, you mentioned also education mm -hmm. just now and a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. What kind of projects have you guys done in terms of that? Well, so far, uh, what we're doing is that we are supporting the Ministry for Education. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very ambitious reform going on now, uh, uh, an overhaul of the educational system. That's, and this reform is going to last all the way up until 2030. Um, so you can imagine that it's a, it's a big reform. Here what we are doing is that we help uh, the, the Ministry for Education regarding the new curriculus. And of course from our point of view we, may, we try to make sure that such issues as Council of Europe standards, for instance human rights education, are included into the new curricula. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, what makes the work of the Council of Europe distinct from other organizations like USAID or mm -hmm. the EU's work? Well, I think one of, one of the main issues, I would, I would mention two factors. Number one is, of course, that Ukraine is a member state, uh, a member state of the Council of Europe. So mm -hmm. um, there are certain obligations for Ukraine here that uh, Ukraine should live up to. Um, number two is that we have uh, Council of Europe. We are sort of the standard-bearing organization of Europe. Uh, we have uh, a lot of conventions and charters. The most famous one probably is the convention, uh, European uh, Convention for Human Rights, which uh, is the basic for our organization, the basis for our organizations, mm -hmm. and the basis for the European Court for Human Rights in Strasbourg also, which um, member states can make use of. Um, so, but we don't only have charters in this area. We have it. We have approximately 200 conventions and charters. Ukraine are uh, not subject to all of them, but to, but to many of them in the fields of medicine, education, sports, mm -hmm. anti-corruption, um, money laundering, etc., etc. So um, we have. For us, the way we work is not, we don't come from outside and say this is what's going to happen. The way we work is something we call a, a strategic t triangle, if you will. We have our standards, our conventions. All of these conventions, they have s different types of monitoring mechanisms. And uh, based on the monitoring, we get a set of recommendations. So we have the standards, monitoring, recommendations, and then we provide the assistance to the member state to implement those recommendations. Okay, I understand. Mm. What about the fact that Russia is also a member state? Does that mm -hmm. become an obstacle in your, op in your activities here? No, not here. I mean, we work on a bilateral basis between mm -hmm. the government, uh, the Council of Europe and the government of Ukraine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about 
uh, some of the benefits and obstacles of working with local partners? Um, well, I've been in this position now for a year, mm -hmm. and what I really am very happy about is the level of engagement uh, from the local partners, from the national authorities, I mean the ministries, the agencies, but also from local partners, uh, be it mayors of different towns in the regions. The way that they try to use the Council of Europe standards, and I mean in use in a positive sense, to mm -hmm. promote reform process uh, in, in Ukraine. So for me it has been a very positive experience uh, to, to work with this type of uh, uh, reform assistance in Ukraine because there is such a buy-in from the national authorities. So overall they've just been very helpful and yeah, it's been uh, less obstacles have. in they terms of that. Yeah. Okay, um, in your experience, mm. um, what is the next plan of action for 2017? Mm -hmm. what, what's the priority that Ukraine needs to focus on? be done? <clears throat> I think now, as I mentioned before, I mean, you have asked me particularly about the few areas, mm -hmm. electoral reform, uh, judiciary reform, media. I think we have reached, we have, there's a lot of progress being done now. We have reached uh, quite, quite a high level of legislative progress. Now it's time to implement that legislation. Now it's time to make sure that the courts, for instance, does not only work on, based on the laws on paper, but that they work in practice as well. Same for the public service broadcasting, same uh, with, when it comes to electoral reform or decentralization. Some mm -hmm. of these areas we have reached already a long way in practical implementation, uh, like decentralization, decentralization, as I mentioned, but in others, what we need to do with a new plan of action is to build on what we have achieved already to make sure that now it goes forward even more. Um, so I think the areas will be more or less the same, but that it will be sort of taking, taking the old plan of action and take it, the new one will take the reforms one step further. Okay. Or two steps if we're lucky. Okay. Mm. Oh, Parliament passes a lot of laws, but implementation is, mm -hmm. you know, commonly an issue. Um, what do you see the, the difference between those two things? I mean, how long would it take? Uh, what are the obstacles of actually implementing? Well, I mean, you have a country, first of all, you have a country where you have uh, a conflict in the East. This, mm -hmm. is, this is always a problem, but that's not uh, the whole story, of course. You also have a, uh, a country that is just now starting to develop its budget, uh, to increase, to get back to growth again in its budget. So mm -hmm. money can also be a problem, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. We all understand that. But um, uh, in general, I come back to what I said before, um, what I'm facing. Uh, in my discussions with the different uh, national Ukrainian partners is still that there is this will to take, to use the Council of Europe work here to take the reforms forward. Okay, that's been very educational and insightful. Thank you so much for visiting us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. That was Martin Enberg. He is the head of the Council of Europe office in Ukraine. You're watching UATV. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah.